New tonight, as we work to put the pandemic behind us, the psychological harm it's inflicted upon students is becoming more apparent. Virtual learning severed the connectedness that came with being in a physical classroom, often a harbor from problems at home. With students back in class, they're bringing emotional baggage along with their books. TV5's Elise Ramey shows us how districts are handling this reality with their already strained resources. Walking through this hectic hallway and talking to students about their ambitions. Did you always have this kind of passion for this? Yeah. I want to be an entrepreneur or I want to have, uh, be a nurse. You might get a sense that it's simply business as usual. I'm um, meeting new people. But what's out of sight. Well, I didn't know how it was going to be. Is not out of mind for students who've had to readjust and adapt to change after change. Well, I didn't know how it was going to be. If, like people were going to like me. If like, I just didn't know. Not only did Hamity Jr.'s Aaliyah Haddock start a new high school, she did so after not sitting in a classroom for 18 months. It was kind of hard, like doing virtual learning and not being able to do in person because I'm more hands on. I hope everybody got a stamp. In September, Zalia and most other mid Michigan students returned to in person learning, some of them to confront an unseen adversary for which there is no vaccine. Six sections here. Pandemic has definitely um, increased the amount of mental health concerns because of death that families have experienced, um, the stress, joblessness, or um, just all the change. Beth Green is a veteran social worker with more than 30 years of experience in Mount Morris's Westwood Heights School District. I asked her what are the top mental health concerns she notices in students who talk to her. Yeah, I would say social anxiety is definitely the one that's um, becoming more frequent among middle and high school. What Green is noticing lines up with study after study in recent months that highlights the lows of mental illness exacerbated by the pandemic. March 31st, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention released an analysis that found more than a third of high school students experienced poor mental health during the pandemic. 44% reported feeling sad or hopeless. 55% said they experienced emotional abuse by a parent or another adult in their home, and 11% said they experienced physical abuse. For some students, school was the safe place. You know, home was not always the best place to be. In January, the Michigan Education Association conducted a survey about concerns educators have. That survey found mental health as their top two biggest concern after the teacher shortage. We are seeing uh, an extreme shortage in educators, uh, teachers, school support staff, and uh, mental health professionals in our schools. While that may be the case, generally speaking, I called local school districts to see if that's true for them and how they're meeting the need, even in this climate when certain positions can be difficult to fill. We have been able to increase our staff by a psychologist, as well as two additional social workers to address that social emotional need. Social worker Chelsea Ebnett is one of Westwood Heights' new hires, working exclusively with elementary age children. MTSS, the Multi-Tiered Systems of Support, is a framework that provides tiered interventions. She says getting younger kids to open up about how they're feeling takes some creativity. Little ones aren't always so familiar with terms like anxiety, stress, um, depression. Things like stretching, yoga, and mindfulness, which they do in school, are important. For example, if a student is feeling stressed, we would say, do you need to get your wiggles out? Do you need to stand up and move around a little bit? And like, how are you feeling here and here? I use a lot of pointing gestures to help that student be able to verbalize how they're feeling. So far, she's noticed a difference in the younger children. I see the little ones de-stressing a little bit um, because when they were at home with their families, I think they were taking on a lot of added stress that they may not have even realized. The social workers here utilize group or individual sessions to reach students. To determine who needs more help, the older children are given a strengths and difficulties questionnaire to complete. The screener looks at emotional symptoms, conduct and relationship problems, hyperactivity, and more. Based on the score from the screener, Green says they identify who needs more help. Several of the students that scored high um, on the screener we're students who are doing well academically, no behavior problems, anything like that. So they're students who likely would have been missed had we not done the screener to let us know that they had some internal things going on. Green says teachers are sometimes the key in noticing any mental distress in students 
and especially lately, their keen observations have been crucial. If a lot of times they'll notice that students may be wearing long sleeves when it's warm out, and so and that's usually they're trying to cover up cuts that they're doing. Um, so we've had way more cutting behavior from students and just trying to make sure that they get the support that they need. It's during this time of day, what's called the advisory third period for high school students, when they can relax, do yoga, catch up on schoolwork, or visit a counselor or social worker. For me personally, it's great because I never really had anybody that understands me and willing to sit down and listen to me. I have some pictures of the jewelry. Yeah. Zalia, who now runs her own business selling bracelets and making clothes, had a hard time not too long ago until she started seeing Miss Green. I like, it made me feel good about myself. It made me be able to talk and express things without her judging me. She's an example of how effective mental health support in schools can be. She now has a bit of advice for parents. I think parents should always listen to their kids and like what they what they got to say because your, their kid might be going through th certain things and they might not believe it like my parents for example. Like I had to go to Miss Green and talk to her and like then that had brought it to my mom's attention like you know, I need to start listening to my daughter more. I need to start understanding her more. Hey, everybody's papers turned in. For all the pandemic did to erode the mental wellness of students, educators say there was some good to come from it, developing closer relationships with students. And is it plus or minus? When the students are forming these bonds with their teachers and myself and the other staff, like they know that they can come to us for anything. So what signs should parents look for in their children? Here are a few tips from health professionals. Watch for small changes in behavior and monitor their mood. Listen to your child. Don't minimize what they're going through and monitor your child's exposure to social media. You'll find more information with this story at WNEM.com.